Chairman Wen Yancheng, Executive Director Russell Xiao, my dear friends in Washington, D.C., I want to bring you my warmest greetings from Taipei. It's a shame I cannot be there in person. As Foreign Minister, my travel isn't as open as it was before. But even if I cannot be there, I want to use this opportunity to say hello to you all and bring you the latest developments from here in Taiwan. I want to begin by thanking the Global Taiwan Institute for inviting me to deliver remarks on behalf of the Thai administration. I congratulate you on your two-year anniversary. What a good two years it has been. All of us have watched GTI closely as you became a powerful advocate for Taiwan in Washington, D.C. Of course, it is the people of Taiwan who are beneficiaries of GTI's good work. So thank you for your leadership on critical issues pertinent to Taiwan-U.S. relations. I would also like to take the moment to remember the work and inspiration of the late GTI Chairman Bob Lai, a lifelong advocate for Taiwan-U.S. ties. There's no better time to reinforce the special bond between Taiwan and the U.S. Next year will mark the 40th anniversary of the Taiwan Relations Act, a cornerstone of our enduring friendship along with the six assurances. The opening of the American Institute in Taiwan's new office complex this June demonstrated the United States' strong commitment to Taiwan and the close and cooperative ties between our two peoples. As the Trump administration carries out its strategy for Asia, Taiwan stands as an ideal partner for like-minded countries in the pursuit of a free and open Indo-Pacific. As Secretary Pompeo rightly pointed out, Taiwan's economic development went hand in hand with creating an open and democratic society that blossomed into a high-tech powerhouse. We have much to offer in the Indo-Pacific region in terms of trade, investment, and expertise. We also have much to share in terms of capacity building for democratic institutions and a vibrant civil society. We are deeply committed to a robust whole of government approach to a peaceful and prosperous Indo-Pacific region. And we stand ready to work with the like-minded countries to advance this common goal through our New South Mount policy and beyond. What needs to be reinforced, we believe, is Taiwan's participation in a wide variety of linkages being built throughout the Indo-Pacific region. We would like to be at the table when economic plans are discussed and when security concerns are addressed. We are an able-bodied partner, ready to do the heavy lifting necessary to turn dreams into reality. Being present, not turn away due to Chinese objections, will provide great assurances to us. What also needs to be reinforced is maintaining close U.S.-Taiwan security ties, as reaffirmed in the Trump administration's first national security strategy. We are thankful for the 1.4 billion U.S. dollar arms sale announcement and welcome the passage of the 2019 National Defense Authorization Act. The NDAA provisions regarding Taiwan are a symbol of Congress support to substantively upgrade official visits and military exchanges between Taiwan and the U.S., as well as strengthen Taiwan's overall military strength and combat readiness. With this being said, Taiwan is also well aware of our own responsibilities. As President Tsai has made clear, Taiwan must make the necessary investments in our own defense. We are pleased to have drawn up a defense budget calling for a 5.6% increase for the next year. This is the single largest increase in recent years. It represents our commitment and determination to defending Taiwan. At the same time, we must make sure these investments are being made in worthwhile equipments and training. We will continue to advance our asymmetric defense capabilities and sharpen our porcupine quills so that there is no miscalculation that might lead to conflict. As America's 11th largest trading partner, we continue to hold robust discussions with U.S. counterparts on ways to enhance and upgrade our trade relationship 
and highlight our efforts to reduce the bilateral trade imbalance that is now in our favor. This year, we proudly sent the largest delegation to the Select USA Investment Summit. FASCON broke ground on the new plant in Wisconsin as part of a $10 billion investment plan. Formosa Petrochemical has announced a new $9.4 billion investment in Louisiana. And our CPC Corporation signed a new $25 billion contract to import LNG from the United States. With the strong momentum we feel going forward, we are confident that our economic ties with the U.S. will continue to prosper. What comes next is up to both of us. But I want to emphasize that it is natural for countries that share a close affinity with each other, see eye to eye in terms of values, and have a vast economic relationship to want to look at free trade agreements. I certainly see both the strategic and economic sense for it in our two countries. And that is a message I hope all of you can help conveying to the Trump administration. As our economic ties grow, people-to-people -people exchanges have also flourished. We have welcomed the inclusion of Taiwan in a global entry program, which will provide an extra boost to the record number of tourists already traveling between our two countries. Furthermore, Taiwan has been the seventh largest source of international students for U.S. schools. And just last year, we celebrated six years of educational exchanges through the Fulbright Scholarship. Under the U.S.-Taiwan Global Cooperation and Training Framework, we showcased that countries can work together, and Taiwan has much to share. While China's sharp power stings, Taiwan's warm power radiates integrity, substance, and genuine care. Chinese efforts to squeeze Taiwan continue to intensify, and no known boundaries as we have seen in China's bullying of international airlines, Beijing has shown no qualms about using its economic leverage to impose its political views on foreign citizens, governments, and private companies. Unfortunately, airlines are far from the only ones subject to China's Orwellian nonsense. Recently, China retaliated against a Japanese newspaper, the Sankei Shinbun. Why? I believe it is because they published an interview with me. And the Spanish University of Salamanca canceled its Taiwan Cultural Days after the Chinese embassy sent threatening letters to the school authorities demanding that it get the quote and quote Taiwan problem right. Let's tell it like it is. There's no Taiwan problem. There's only a China problem. The problem is China's coercion of Taiwan in the political, diplomatic, military, and economic realms. The problem is China's suppression of freedom of speech, freedom of enterprise, and academic freedom in countries far from its shores. In particular, we have seen continued reports about China's crackdown on peaceful worship, particularly in the Catholic, Christian, and Muslim communities. And this should be of great concern for the international community. Make no mistake, China's intensified coercion of Taiwan is not just a threat to Taiwan, and it's not just a threat to regional security or balance of power. At its core, it is a threat to global values of freedom and democracy. As China continues to flex its muscles and expand its influence everywhere in the world, if China is allowed to push Taiwan around and force Taiwan to surrender through coercion, there will be severe global consequences for the democratic way of life and the rule of law. Taiwan is a frontline state. We are the first step of contact for China's actions around the world. Taiwan cannot fall. Not if we want to sustain the values we treasure or the system that has allowed for worldwide prosperity over the past 70 years. As I said before and wish to say again, Taiwan is not fighting a losing war. We are gaining more and more support from like-minded countries, especially as China uses its economic leverage to pursue undue political influence in countries around the world. When we strive to strengthen our democracy, safeguard our freedom of press and speech, 
and shine as a beacon of hope for many who aspire to pursue shared universal values. We know these efforts will be answered around the world. We are on the moral high ground. Taiwan is the David to China's Goliath, and we will prevail. As President Tsai said at the AIT delegation ceremony, quote, as free and open democracies, we have an obligation to work with one another to defend our values and protect our joint interests. We Taiwanese are one resilient people, and we are determined to safeguard our precious democracy. Resilient and determined though we might be, we cannot face these challenges alone. Thanks to the steadfast support from the Trump administration, Congress, and a broader U.S. policy community represented here in this GDI symposium, we know we are not alone. But in trying times like this, reinforcing the bonds that are already in place requires constant attention and creative reaffirmation. Now more than ever, let us work together to defend our shared values and build an enduring peace based on freedom and democracy. Thank you all again for your attendance today, and I wish the GDI Second Annual Symposium a great success.